Today's video, mesocycle progressions for hypertrophy training. In the last video, we figured out how to design a hypertrophy mesocycle, super, but we only really talked about the first week of training. What do you do in the second week, third week, fourth week, so on and so forth? How do you modify variables to do what? Well, the answer is to continue to challenge the physiology appropriately, because remember, the body adapts over time. What used to make you jacked the most starts to deteriorate in its abilities to make you jacked and you need a little bit more somehow. But there's totally a uh, possibility to have too much. You could be too aggressive, too much fatigue. So we wanna walk this fine line of adjusting exactly to our body's needs. Let's take a look at how to do that with two variables. One is making sure we hit the needed reps and reserve per set that we want per week. And the other is how to adjust volume. So first, how do we adjust the number of reps or the amount of weight on the bar to accurately uh, attend to our body's need for more stimulus. Well, here's the deal. We start our mental cycle at about three or four reps in reserve because for a new set of exercises and a new set of rep ranges, that's probably a really good mix of stimulus, just enough to get some good growth going and uh, doesn't deposit so much fatigue uh, that ends up having to cut our mental cycle short because fatigue rises too much. So it's a good start. But we also know that we get more hypertrophy as we go from three or four reps in reserve to two reps, one rep, and eventually zero reps in reserve going all the way to failure in any one time causes more growth. We also know that cumulative fatigue expands as we go through a mental cycle. It's going to chase us down eventually. We might as well walk that line with it and make training progressively harder. So the answer for progression there is we want our first week of training to be about three or four reps in reserve. And then based on how long our mesocycle cycle is, we want the last week to be zero reps or one rep in reserve, usually at most. So things get progressively harder over time, which means like if you have like a four week mesocycle, cycle, which is pretty typical, you can drop one rep in reserve every time to so go four, three, two, one, or you know, four, or three, two, one, zero. And then if you have an eight week mesocycle cycle or anything in between, some weeks you can just keep the same reps in reserve. What you never wanna do is go up in reps in reserve. For example, if this week you did everything three reps in reserve, you have three reps left in the tank after you stopped each working set. If the next week, if it's four reps in reserve or five reps in reserve, that's actually easier. It's not nearly as much of a challenge and you can't guarantee optimal growth. So we want things either to maintain difficulty or more often to get a little bit more difficult, right? How do we do that? Well, there's two ways and both of them are totally cool. Way one is really straightforward. You add weight. You did 225 pounds on the bench for sets of 10, uh, three reps in reserve this week. Next week, you want two reps in reserve. Well, if you just do the same 225 pounds for sets of 10, you might be four or five reps in reserve because you got a little stronger, your work capacity improved. So maybe you want to put 230 pounds on the bar, maybe 235. That's a decision you have to make. But what you want to do is roughly target that next reps in reserve, the one you want, two reps in reserve or whatever it is. So it's always possible to add weight to the bar. Sometimes adding reps is a totally cool option. And really, the two are probably very roughly effective. Effective. Sometimes adding reps is a really good idea because you can't add weight. For example, if you do lateral raises with the tens, right, 10 pound dumbbells, what are you gonna do, go to the 15s next week? That's gonna drop your reps like crazy. You might get two reps or something. So what you wanna do is do the tens one week and then okay, I still I need to go to two RIR this week instead of three, maybe I'll do the tens instead of for roughly sets of 10, I'll do them for sets of 11, I'll add a rep or two to every single set. How much weight to add? How many reps to add? The answer is whatever thing you think will get you the closest to your reps and reserve target with roughly the same amount of reps that you did last week. When you're adding reps, if you choose to add weight, it's straightforward. If you choose to add reps throughout your mesocycle, what you wanna do is stop adding reps and add weight if the reps get out of the range you're targeting. So for example, if you chose to do leg presses in the 10 to 20 rep range and you start with sets of 12 and you add reps instead of weight, at some point you're gonna be doing 20 reps, 21 reps on your first set. That's too many, that's outside of your rep range. So at that point you wanna add weight again. So there's a balance there, but generally wanna add as many reps or, or, or as much weight as keeps the exercise the degree of challenge we want. And that degree is the reps in reserve we've targeted for every single week, which should be going down, rather making it difficult every single week. Got it. So that takes care of how many reps we need to add if we add them and or weight we need to add week to week to week. Perfect. What about volume, number of sets? Here's the deal. We use a two-factor model here at RP and Juggernaut Strength for how to add sets or whether to add them and how many of them to add. The factor is perceived recovery based on soreness and actual recovery based on performance. We use soreness sort of as a hint and performance as a confirmatory measure. So here we go. If you are healing ahead of time, okay, 
Soreness wise, usually you can add one or two sets granted that performance is good. And we'll talk about performance in a second. So what does that mean? Let's say you train chest twice a week, Monday and Thursday. You train chest on Monday and you didn't even get sore at all. So by Thursday you were training and everything was totally cool, but you never even got sore. That's what we call healing way ahead of time. Next Monday, you want to do one or two sets more for chest than you did last Monday because clearly you have way more recovery capacity than you're using. And on average, literature shows that the more volume you do to a point, the more growth you get. So if you have tons of recovery capacity free, you might as well add quite a bit of sets. What about if you're healing just on time? For example, you have a Monday, Thursday chest workout and you healed completely the Wednesday night. That means Wednesday afternoon, you're touching your chest and you're like, that's still a little bit sore, still a bit of a twinge there, don't feel completely recovered. Thursday morning, you finally felt completely good. Is it a good idea to add two sets to next Monday? That might be overkill and you won't recover on time for the next Thursday. So maybe add no sets at all or potentially add one set if all the other measures are really good, like your performance is stellar, maybe you can add a set. Our advice here is play the conservative game most times, don't add any sets, and the next week if you heal a little bit ahead of time, then you can add a set or two. On the last point on soreness, if you are still sore in the next session, do not add any volume. Most times that's the best advice. For example, Monday you do chest, Thursday you do chest again. When you come in Thursday to your incline dumbbell presses, your chest is still sore from Monday. Like, holy crap, this is not great. Overlapping soreness like that is not a sustainable feature of training. Eventually it's gonna cost you a ton of fatigue, it might even get you hurt, and it probably hampers your hypertrophy. So if you did four sets on Monday for chest, and you come in Thursday and your chest is still sore, next week, four sets again at most. You do not want to go up to five because then you'll for sure, again, get sore, get sore, get sore, and you'll never recover and you'll never grow much. All right, that's it for soreness. Now we can modify these instructions for soreness based on our performance measures. So first scenario is if you're doing super well, which means that you hit your reps in reserve that you are targeting, with more reps than you did last week and more weight or something like that. So you just blew your numbers out of the water. If your performance is super good, then you just default right to the soreness guidelines. You look at soreness, whatever it says, you do that. The next option is if you're basically uh, just uh, hitting your performance markers right spot on where you want them. So for example, you did sets of 10 last week at three RIR. This week you did sets of 10 with five more pounds two RIR, and they were exactly as challenging as you thought. Basically, you're not outlasting yourself, you're not outdoing your performance, you're just right on target for the mesocycle. In that case, default back to soreness. Same plan as always, whatever the soreness says, that's what you do. The next option is different. If you had to work harder to hit your reps in reserve, or if you underdid your targets, right, but didn't quite go to failure. So for example, let's say you wanted to hit sets of 10, you hit sets of 10 at 225 pounds on the bench this Monday. And then once you hit those sets of 10, next time you did it, let's say it's at three reps in reserve. Next time you put 230 pounds on the bar and you expect to hit sets of 10 at two reps in reserve, right? But you actually have to go to one rep in reserve. We can't say that you underperformed because technically you still hit your target, but it was more difficult than you expected. You had to go to a different RIR. Or if you just stuck to the same RIR, you're like, okay, I'm not going over two RIR, you actually end up hitting sets of nine and 10 instead of just 10. Okay, we can't quite say because you weren't pushing it all the way to failure, we can't quite say you underperformed, but it's close. So in that case, no matter what soreness says, do not add sets. Wait, let your body's recovery catch up a little bit so that next time that workout could be more ideal because you're not quite at your recovery limits, but you're close. The last option is if you distinctly underperform compared to last week. So for example, you got uh, you know 225 pounds on the bench, sets of 10 week, uh, you know, whatever week, the next week you got sets of nine, and then the next week, pushing all the way to failure, you got sets of eight. Where that's a performance decline, and often it'll decline even faster than that. If two sessions in a row, not even two weeks in a row, so Monday and Thursday, if your performance consistently declines in a body part or in a muscle group, what you wanna do is definitely do not add any volume, and probably what you wanna do is for next week, cut the volume in half, take a recovery session, a recovery half week, where half the week you train very light and very easy, or an entire deload week, because that muscle group has accumulated so much fatigue, it's probably at about its maximum recoverable volume, you wanna really bring that fatigue down so that you can continue to train it for the rest of the mesocycle. So basically, you have your soreness indices, they're the first guide, you check with performance to make sure you're on track, 
You combine those two together as described, and then you get a literal program, an algorithm to figure out how many sets you need to go up. Some weeks you'll go up two sets on an exercise. Some weeks you'll go up one, some weeks zero. It's all okay because auto-regulation is the way to see that your body gets exactly what it needs, nothing less, nothing more. And at some point, you're gonna reach a point where you hit uh, you know, basically one or zero RIR for two weeks because you just got to that difficulty in your program. Most of your body's gonna start hitting MRV and underperforming. That's when you deload the entire body, recover, and then create your next mesocycle using the last video we talked about and this video as well. Folks, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, check out all the links we've posted for you in the description. And if you want more information on this exact topic, look for the scientific principles of hypertrophy training due out at some point in 2020.